Hello. I love obscure old video formats, and this one I have covered before a bit. It's called Technicolor and Funai CVC. It was also made by some other manufacturers, including Grundig. Uh, the tapes could be up to an hour. Uh, it used a quarter inch tape. It was released around about 1982, sold for maybe a couple of years. It wasn't a, a great success at all. The machines had some problems. So uh, they're quite rare and even rarer in working order. Now this particular one is probably the most popular model, it's the one you see most often. Uh, it was a portable model 212 or 212E in the case of uh, a PAL model. This particular one is NTSC and as well as PAL they also did them in CCAM but it's possible that none of the CCAM machines still exist. Now there was another model that occasionally pops up, it's called a video showcase and it includes a built-in monitor and I have a couple of those. One of them is starting to give me a little bit of trouble so I'd like us to have a look at that and see if we can uh, sort the problem out. Let's get stuck in. Let's start by just admiring this machine. It uh, looks like some sort of giant boombox. It's absolutely gorgeous bit of uh, 80s design. So we have piano key operation, it's not electronic um, light touch. Uh, a beautiful little monitor here, volume control and, and controls for the monitor there. There's a, so a sort of slot at the side which can take a battery. I think the mains pack can be swapped out for a battery as well. I think it can take two batteries, but we have a mains pack here and a battery slot there. Uh, we have a, a camera socket here. Um, which would take, I think it was the same connector as VHS cameras. These came, I believe, with a JVC camera, which was terrible in low light and really was part of the downfall of the, the format. And it's got a few extra features here. Tracking control generally didn't need to be touched because tracking was not a problem on this format as a rule. It could do sound dub and slow motion, very rough slow motion. Around the back, not so much useful stuff. You could connect it to uh, an external charger. I think it will actually connect to the same charger as is used on the portable one, uh, if you want to do it that way. Um, and that might give you the audio video connectors as well. So that's quite handy. Uh, a circuit breaker uh, reset button. And I've added audio and video connectors to this machine. They just patched into the camera socket and some settings there for the uh, monitor side. Right, let's uh, power it up and uh, we may be able to demonstrate the problem. I should say that the mechanism is of the unlaced variety, so it only laces when you select play. There's no real picture search options apart from um, variable speed. And you might say that machine's working just fine, and it does look fine, doesn't it? But sometimes it runs a little slow, or not well timed. I'm not sure if it's fast or slow, but I think it's slow. And the picture jitters slightly. Uh, we'll come to the end of the tape, I think. So if you look at that, you'd say there's nothing really wrong with it. But there is. It keeps doing that. It keeps rolling. It's not stable. Uh, well, that's a in-between shots thing, so that's fair enough. But every so often, the picture will jump. And I believe what's happening is the tape is running very slightly slow. And it then speeds up a bit and tries to catch up with itself. So it's a bit of a capstan servo problem. And I've already cleaned the heads, uh, the audio head, the audio control head. Uh, which can give this sort of problem. So uh, let's take it apart again and show you what's what. And I should say, though the mechanism in here is the same as the mechanism in the portable machine, the portable is an absolute pain in the to take apart because you've got to take all this panel, you've got to take this panel off here, and I think every screw in there is a different size, and there's hidden screws as well, and it's an absolute pain to dismantle this that this particular one's got most of the screws missing because I have to take it apart sometimes 
So uh, these bigger machines are actually a lot easier to work on, or at least to gain access to the top of the deck. But once you start to go further in, they start to become, like the portables, horrible to work on. Right, let's uh, take the top off here and look at the mechanism. When we remove the top, it'll take out the battery meter, the tape counter, these couple of LEDs, and the uh, memory, rewind memory to zero function. But we can just unplug this. We don't need that, so we'll unplug that. We'll lose those features, it doesn't matter. Uh, but we do need to remember which button is which. Right, I'll switch the power off. The monitor side, anyway, is a different sort of component here, so uh, you're not likely to get zapped by the tube or anything when working on this side. Okay, I've taken this off. This particular screw only has to be slackened off to get around there, it doesn't have to be removed. This is the connector we can unplug and we'll take the top away to give ourselves more space in there. The audio control head is here I believe, at the back, uh, well there's actually two heads and it's going to be the furthest back one I believe. And I've already cleaned that and cleaned the lower drum. This is the uh, spinning head disc, a bit like some beta machines, you've got a disc sat between two stationary uh, drums. Um, the fault, one of the faults these can suffer from, well there's many, one is that when you press play and it laces up it fails to lace and it makes a horrible noise and that's an extremely common problem. Another problem can be that these head tips can go open circuit. I've had that twice so that wasn't just a freak event. The belts will of course need replacing and some uh, at times and the belts are extremely hard to get to and in fact it's uh, the belts I'm going to be looking at today because I suspect my problem is a bad capstan drive belt so uh, we want to get the deck out and uh, have a look at the underside and it's been a while since I've taken one of these apart so I'll be feeling my way along a little bit as well. Okay, to take the deck out, we do need to fully remove this screw now. Ordinarily now, you could remove this entire deck, but um, I've complicated my own self here because I have these wires to the rear panel connectors somewhat in my own way. So I'm going to have to work around that slightly. We need to separate the main PCB here from the deck and some of the smaller PCBs. And as well as some big fittings down here, we, I believe, from my memory, have to take this side panel off. So let's start with that. Then we can get to this badly placed screw here, which straps the main deck through this uh, socket assembly. We may have to undo these screws as well but I don't think so, we'll find out later. We do need to disconnect the contacts in this screening can and we need to separate off this board from this one along the edge connectors here. And there's another connector at the back here that I probably should have done earlier. Right. They should separate, but we have a cable tie fouling us up here, so let's get rid of that. And there was another connector which has just popped off, actually. And then another connector again. Now we have the deck out. You can see why a lot of people would just balk at that and say, no, I can't fix it. That is an awful dismantling procedure just to gain access to the deck. And on the portables it's even worse because there's more screws just to get to this place. Now one of the consequences of that dismantling procedure is that you can't test the deck once it's out. Absolutely no chance. Right, I'm going to put you so that you can look down on this and see it in a bit more detail. 
Right, what I've done on this one in the past is marked up what the buttons do, which you can just about see there, which can make it a little bit easier to work on when you've got the top off. Right, so check the tape. Let's look underneath. The belt that particularly upsets me is this one, because that takes a protracted route through these, this gear assembly. And clearly what they've done is drop the belt in and then drop the gears on the top doing manufacture. And that's awful because you don't want to have to take all these gears off just to change your drive belt. And I have found, and I'm not going to demonstrate, that you see this small component here that goes through there. Well, you can get to the other side of that. Take a spring off the top if you remove that spring there, then you've got access to the top of that post. And then, you take if you need to change this belt, you can actually feed it through here. So you can get the belt on without taking all this gear assembly off. That's the way I do it. Other people might think it's easy to take the gears off. Now, this is the capstan belt. And I was hoping to find that that was in rotten condition and that would have explained why the machine keeps going slow. But I have to say, that doesn't seem too bad. Though, a little slack. No, I have to say, it's a little slack. What do you think? Slack enough to cause a problem? Just might be, mightn't it? Now clearly this end is easy to get to, the other end is buried in here. But I don't believe there's anything to stop us popping the belt off the top of there. So that's what I'm going to do. I will have changed this belt when I got this machine. Um, probably somewhere around about uh, 13, 14 years ago, so it's entirely possible that the belt has failed. Yes, I think we've got that out. It does look a little bit slippery and it definitely didn't have quite as much twang as I'd have liked, but it feels okay. Maybe it was never really the right size. And it was okay when it was a nice fresh belt, but now it's older, it's not so good. So let me try to find a replacement. If I haven't got one, I'll have to order one. Well, I found a belt which came from an old Hitachi video recorder um, pack. I've got quite a few of these, so I don't feel too guilty about raiding a belt. And it is the uh, same sort of length, but just a little bit shorter. So that looks about right. There's the original one, and this is our replacement. But it is a fair bit wider and I don't think that width will be okay. I don't think it'll fit on the pulley so I'd have to trim this down uh, which isn't really ideal but I may have to do that. I just have to trim it down with a pair of scissors. I was thinking about different ways you know which should, I, should I try trimming it with a guillotine for example but uh, I think it's too likely it'll go out of true so scissors it is. Well, that's uh, not exactly audiophile grade, but uh, it may be good enough to uh, get the machine working. Uh, it may also be that this belt is actually too thick and too heavy, but uh, let's uh, try it. Well, it seems right, actually. I know it's not a very pretty looking thing, but I don't believe the varying thickness is going to cause a wear and flutter issue. That's definitely worth a try, I'd say. OK, let's uh, put that back onto the machine. Right, there's the main board that we need to uh, reattach to. So uh, I think I'll put you back to the side where you can get a better view. OK, that's the uh, odd connector there fitted. We have these two to do, we have the edge connector to do, and then the head ones to do.
I think I'll test it first before I reassemble this side panel because that could be a waste of time. But I do need to refit the connectors here. There's the power connector and the connector to the monitor. I'm going to refit one of the screws at the front to make sure that we've got good um, earth contact. Okay, it's um, put back roughly. I've fitted one screw to make sure that uh, the earthing is good here. If it turns out to be terrible in terms of capstan speed, then I'll have to try to order a better belt from somewhere. So uh, I've not refitted all the screws and everything at this point. Uh, I may have done something wrong because I don't think I saw any capstan uh, tape movement then. I think the uh, spools were stalled. Yeah, they're not going. Or have I just pressed the freeze frame button in? Is that the problem? Ah, there we are, it's freeze frame button. Well, you may be able to see that it's rolling. It clearly isn't happy. It's uh, struggling to achieve the correct speed because that belt is too thick. So uh, I'm going to have to try to order from somewhere a belt closer to the original size. This one. Uh, and fit that and see if we're any better. So that's going to take me a few days. Okay, so I've had to order a drive belt for this. I've ordered several different sizes, so we've got a good chance of finding the right one. But they're going to take a few days to arrive, so we'll have to come back to it. But it's been good that I've been able to show you the mechanism in here. This is the Technicolor um, showcase model, and there's also the portable, which has the same mechanism. And sometimes they're branded, uh, as well as Technicolor, they can be branded Funai and a few other uh, brand names. Uh, and of course, I also showed you on a previous video the TIAC professional uh, CVC machine that came out from uh, a little bit later on. They're quite rare. Now, I'd also mentioned in a previous video that there was a, another model built by Grundig, which was actually even smaller than the uh, Technicolor Funai model. Uh, and that I've got one of those. I had one a long time ago, but I misplaced it in a house move, which is a, a shame. Uh, it'd be really nice, you know, if I could demonstrate the uh, quite rare uh, Grundig variant of the CVC machine. But Special there's not much delivery. chance of... Oh, right. I wonder what's in here then. Right, let me show you what we have here. Start with um, this. We have a, a cable, I believe. So this looks like an extension cable, but it isn't. It's got a cable uh, a, a pinout change, and it's for connecting this camera or the yes, this camera to a Grundig 2x4 Plus uh, V2000 video recorder, which is not a model I've ever owned. The 2x4 Plus is uh, a kind of a top loader, I think. I only have the 2x4 Supers. Uh, I did have another model, the 2x4, I think it was a model 1600, that was ghastly. Okay, some service information, good. Uh, instructions to this camera, uh, which looks like it's uh, all in German. I don't know if any of this is in English. And bits of it, uh, yes, there we are, this is in English, here we are. Okay. Um, and, oh, let's have a look at this. Some of the other things available from Grundig. We have this huge Cinema 9000 projector, uh, a Grundig Supercolor TV. Actually, I had a Grundig portable TV for a short time, and the picture quality was stunning. It was like nothing else I'd ever seen. Gorgeous picture, lovely colors. I don't know if it was the tube phosphors they used, but I just had a wonderful picture. Uh, then the... Models 17, 18, and 100, uh, 1900 uh, cameras, which always have various features. Uh, and there we are, the Grundig 2x4, not the Grundig 2x4 Super. Uh, it feels a little bit, it has a kind of a look about it, a bit like the, um, the what was it called, the 4004 um, SVC, SVC 4004, which was a super video cassette which is a machine I've got and I've demonstrated. Looks very similar sort of layout. Uh, that was a different model, that. Right, okay, so that's interesting stuff. So here's the camera itself. Uh, now, I believe these cameras were actually built by JVC. Oh, the plug's a bit squashed. 
Um, Eins, out, so in and out. Not quite sure what that's for. External microphone, that's always a good thing. Uh, there's a tripod mount on the bottom, but yes, you can take this off if you want and mount it directly on a tripod. Uh, there's a microphone, should have had a, a windshield on that, which is long since disintegrated. Um, and adjustments in, <laughs> in German for red and blue. Uh, and really rather nice looking optics made in Japan. I wonder who built those. Yes, that feels nice. Those optics do feel very smooth. So that's the camera. And then the machine it's itself, well, the VP100 here looks like the original legends were too hard for somebody to understand or wore off. Uh, maybe there was a, I think it might have been a plate on here that's obviously parted company. Uh, so I'll make a new label for that uh, for the button layout. But the button layout is the same, I think, apart from the fact this has got dub. The layout order is the same as on the... Uh, portables and indeed the showcase from Technicolor. Normal and slow-mo I think that is. Um, not sure what's in there. How do we find out? Don't know. In there will be a battery. Oh yeah, there's the battery. It plugs in using a barrel connector. And that's where you plug the mains adapter here and this mains adapter is also smaller than the one that uh, came with uh, Technicolor Funai ones which is welcome because they were too large. Uh, Laden that button says that's obviously on and off. That's a power connector for the battery so you can charge your battery directly on this. And you've got audio ausgang, video ausgang and HF which would be high frequency so that would be for uh, a modulator output. That would be modulator output using phono connector which is kind of not ideal, but phono to um, a normal Bellingly aerial connector will go to your TV. And this machine has a tape in it, stuck in it. And the owner of this machine has uh, passed it to me and asked me to get the tape out and transfer it for him, and I get to keep the machine. So uh, that's what we'll be doing. Right, let's go with our first uh, switch on of this. Uh, I did find a couple of loose wires in the mains plug uh, so just sorted them out. It's plugged into an isolation transformer. Switched it on. Nothing obvious. I guess that's the charge button. Is that the on off? Aha! Bit of life from here. Sort of whirring. Sometimes with CVC machines, jabbing a play button can help the uh, lacing and unlacing mechanism. But uh, doesn't seem to be working in this case so it's obviously got a completely um, expired drive belt or similar in there right so we'll have to take it apart let's power it down now many many years since I took one of these apart so I do not remember what I have to do but I, it can't be worse to take apart than the Technicolor ones which are just horrible I suspect the mechanism inside is fairly similar though. Okay, there comes the bottom. Ah, it's just ejected. Well, there's one problem solved right away. So that'll need a bit of tidying up, but uh, I can run that tape now. Good. I think we have to take these screws off the side from the carrying handle. That's it. You can see how similar the mechanism is to the Technicolor one, but they just shrunk it all a little bit. Still got this uh, panel on the side. 
which is still plugged into the board underneath. Okay, let's uh, try to separate the uh, deck from the uh, main PCB. It's probably going to be fairly similar to the uh, other machine. We can see these cables from the head don't go into a screening can, but connect directly to the PCB. We have these connectors to undo, but uh, I think I'm going to have to free up the deck a little bit before I can get to them. It feels like they've got these wires here soldered up to the top and going through to the uh, deck. Is that real? That would be a horrible bit of design. Another connector in here. And another connector. So they're more or less separated. You've just got uh, a few wires. There's an earthing contact and those bodged on wires. Right, let's look at the uh, mechanism. I've just got some black gunge on my finger, which implies that something's, uh, something rubber has disintegrated. And of course the design is similar in that you cannot exercise the deck. Uh, right, this is a something rubber here that has totally gone. Uh, what was that? Um, that's just become a, a goopy mess. Hopefully that's a drive belt and not an idler tyre that's gone there. Wow. It's looking like it's just a drive belt. It's the belt, the main, there's a capstan belt here that goes around here that's um, gone. So I reckon it went around here and on this side of this pulley. I'll give you a bit of a close up. You'll be able to see this better than I can then. We have broken off drive belt all the way around this pulley, flywheel, and gooey belt here on the motor. So I think, yes, there's belt there, so it must have taken that route around there. Uh, I need to clean all that gunge off. <laughs> uh, this belt is the main mechanism belt here which I think is round cross-section, which is quite unusual. And it actually seems to be in good order, that one. So the whole mechanism seems to be in much better shape than I expected, apart from that one very gooped up belt, which is a fairly short belt, maybe a little bit hard to obtain. But uh, first thing I need to do is clean all that gunge off. I also need to see what the width of the belt is, whether it's a four or five millimeter, that's the usual sizes. So I'll get a, a fragment of this belt, if I can, and measure it. Or maybe measure what's stuck to the uh, pulley there. I'm sure that's five millimeter. So there's the belt still stuck to the pulley. And as you can see, it is just completely liquid. I mean, look, it's really gone to liquid. Fairly sure it's five millimeter. I'll try to order something. Um, I won't have a belt of that size in stock, I doubt, because it's very short for flat belt. But uh, I'll clean this up off camera because that's a bit boring. And um, let's see where we are once that's uh, cleaned up. I've put a bit of sticky tape around the route that I believe that belt goes so I can measure that sticky tape and that'll give me a, a rough idea of the belt. I'll need to take some off to give it some stretch but uh, that's definitely going to be a pretty good approximation for the uh, belt length or the circumference. Not going to be an easy belt to get hold of though. 
After lots of cleaning with isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds, we've cleaned up this pulley, the motor drive, this pulley, which of course is the capstan flywheel as well. They've all come up really good. So I've got um, a selection of drive belts on order of a few different sizes for this one, as well as for the other CVC machine. So hopefully uh, one of those will fit nicely and I'm reasonably confident this machine mechanically should then work. Let's have a quick look at the mechanism because it's interesting. There's no mode switch in these, it's all done by micro switches. So I count one, two, three, four, five, well, six micro switches, although that one might have had to exist whether we had a mode switch or not. But six micro switches, that's going to be more expensive than a mode switch. But uh, micro switches are more reliable in general. So that's not a bad design actually from that point of view. I just want to show you something about the front panel. Do you remember I said there was a thing I couldn't open here? Well, that's because I need to press the earthen button and open it, and that gives you these ports here, which would line up with these. So we have tracking control, microphone, remote control on off, headphone socket, and video in. And we also have this control here, which is speed, which playback speed and Eins built, which that button there presumably puts it into uh, freeze frame and then you control the speed that way. Uh, and there was some confusion for some time on the Wikipedia entry for CVC that said this machine could record at different speeds and it was because of this control here. But no, it doesn't record at different speeds and I edited that mistake out some years ago. Note also that there are buttons or switches here which are operated by these levers here so we need to make sure that they're all in the front facing position when we put the deck back on otherwise these might strike the top of these and then it won't go together properly and it wouldn't work anyway. Right so we're waiting for the drive belt for this that'll take a few days. The other thing I've done just for giggles is I've taken the battery out and put it on the charger here just to see if it will take any charge. I suspect not but uh, you know why not just for a giggle see if that battery actually functions. Right so we'll come back in a few days with hopefully belts for both of the CVC machines I'm working on and uh, see if we can make some progress on them. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed looking at the uh, mechanisms of the CVC machines. It's not something I've ever covered before. I suspect nobody's really covered it before. Uh, do come back uh, and watch me do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. <laughs>